Hello and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. We're now approaching the end of our series and we're going to start working on our executions or takedowns of our enemy guard character. So the idea being as our, as our guard character is walking around, we want to be able to take them down if we sneak up behind them close enough. So let's get started with this. This will no doubt take a couple of episodes, but we'll make a start today in getting the interact to work on our character here. So we're going to go over to our player character's blueprint. And in here, we're going to set up a key for us to uh, execute and take down our character. So in here, we're going to go make a new input in our project settings. A new input here, action mappings, and we'll call this one takedown. And I'm going to use the F key on my keyboard for this and turn that off. Okay, so now I can open up and add our takedown event. And this will trigger whenever I push F on my keyboard. So the way this works is we can do a line trace out from the player character. Um, and we want to only do it when we are close enough to the character as well. So a couple of things. We want to be able to make this only work when we're close enough and facing the behind behind the character so they don't want to go from the front want to go from behind um and that will then enable this so what we're going to do is make our tick event so let's find our tick event and here it is and on the tick event here we want to be constantly doing a check out in front of the player for a takedown so we're going to make a new event for so function in here and this will be a takedown trace and the takedown trace is going to be a simple line trace by channel and we're going to get the player uh, sorry get the actor location and that'd be a start point and then we want to get the forward vector of this actor multiply that by how far away you want to be able to take down enemies so I'm going to do 200 here and then I'm going to add that onto my original location to get the end point for my line trace and uh, we'll leave it like that the out hit we're going to take out here and do break and expand the open to see all of our content here and we're going to take this hit actor here and we're going to see whether or not he's facing the same way as us now we do that by using a dot product so first of all let's do a, uh, a branch in here to make sure it only does it when we actually hit something so I'm return value into the branch and then we're going to do a dot product so just type in dot product and in here you'll need two locations you'll need um, the uh, sorry the two forward vectors so the two forward vectors are the your player one so we're going to get actor forward vector and that would be Okay, go to the top one there and we also want to get the one that is for the actor we hit here so get hit actor get forward vector and then plug that into the bottom dot product then print string this out now what this will do is it's going to tell us the dot product or how basically how similar are these two values in their uh, directions and this will do it on any actor at the moment so I can go up to this uh, block here and it should oh hang on would help if I actually put the function onto the tick so let's go back to the event graph and chuck our takedown trace onto the tick and whilst I'm here I'll just make a debug draw for one frame okay there's a thing there so this will now output the number based on which way it's facing so if I were to sneak up on this enemy here without him seeing me oh ah would help if I actually also change the visibility channels on this so on the trace channel you want to change it from visibility to camera um, pawns by default ignore visibility traces so that's why that is the case So we're facing the same way, therefore the value is closest to 1. But as soon as we face the opposite way, it's closer to not minus 1. So 
what we're looking for there is this dot product being closer to one. So what you do here is we're gonna do nearly equal to float and we'll do one with an error tolerance of 0. Uh, let's do 0. 0.1. So th that means it can be either 0. 0.9 or 1.1, any value in between. Okay, so when it nearly float, uh, nearly equals equal to true, put that into a branch again. This means that now we're facing behind the player character, uh, behind the, the takedown character, if this is true. So we want to do a return node here, and we're going to return the actor that we are hitting here. So hit actor, we're going to drag this out and promote that to a local variable, and plug that in, like so, and we're going to call this one hit actor, and we're going to drag that out, choose get, and then plug that into my return node here. And we'll call this out actor. Okay, so that'll return true for that. Uh, if it's false, you want it to return node, but leave it blank for the out actor. So on my event graph now, I'm going to do a print string on out actor into there. Compile, save. Go and push play. And then I can see I'm looking at the guard enemy. If I look at him from the front, it's not going to do it. Only from the behind. Okay. So that's working as intended. Next, we only want it to work when we are going to uh, take it down. So, for example, if I were to push play on this and look at these blocks as well, these will also return an actor. We don't want to be able to take down a, a ramp. That doesn't make sense. So, what we're going to do is set up an interface so we can actually take these things down. So, we're going to create a interface, and I'll do that. I'll do it here, and go blueprints interface. And we'll call this one combat interface. And in here, we're going to have a new function called can takedown. And we're going to output a value there. And this is going to be uh, just call it return value. Hit compile and save. Then I'm going to go to my guard character over here and go, actually, we'll do it on the parent of the enemy. On the parent of the enemy, we'll go to the class settings and go to add our interface to it. And we'll call it the combat interface. Hit compile. So now it has this can take down uh, event uh, function. So in here, we're going to right click on that and uh, not right click on it, so just double click on it and open it up like so. So on here, we well, can either tick it to be true or false whether or not they can be taken down. Um, in this case, what might be nicer to use is to have a variable on here and call it can take down. Oh, we call it um, uh, can be taken down like so. And we're going to drag that onto that return value there and make this variable editable. Hit compile and save. So now on our guard enemy, all we have to do is tick the, uh, on the class defaults, can be taken down to true. Hit compile and save. And what that means is that our enemy here, uh, no enemy, our player character, zoop, Go down back down our trait uh, take that take down trace sorry, and we'll take hit actor out here, and before we return it, we're going to call that interface can take down, 
and the can takedown will return a true or false. And we're going to use that to output our return node. So here we'll do return and we'll do a select and just choose the one that's got a yellow arrows on it. This is wildcard. So I can plug in return value into out actor, meaning that now true and false will accept like variable types. So the out actor here is going to be hit actor if it is true and false will be blank. Compile and save. So now the ramp should no longer output its name, but the guard enemy should because they inherited that interface. And there you go. And now we are kind of almost ready to do the takedown. Before we do that though, I want to put a little widget on the screen that says, hey, push F to take down. So let's do that and go and create a widget. I don't think we have a widget currently, so we'll make a new widget. And we call it heads up display. And in a head up display, we can do a simple message in the center of the screen here. Drag text out, anchor it to the center, align it to the center by changing 0.5 and 0.5, which makes it um, the anchor of the actual thing being the center of the block. Um, change position here to zero and zero. And you can see it now perfectly in lined in the middle. And we'll change the text block here to press uh, or press F to take down. Uh, you may get this sort of thing where it overhangs, just tick size the content and that'll fix that for you. Compile and save. So this text block we want to be variable. And we're going to change the text here to take down text. And go to the graph. And we're going to make a new function in here called uh, show takedown text. And this is going to be quite a simple function. All it does is it'll take one input, which would be a Boolean um, show. And if that is uh, true, going to the branch. We'll take the takedown text and set its visibility to be visible. If it is false, we're going to make set visibility equal to hidden. Simple as that. Very basic setup. Obviously, you can do a lot more with it if you wish, but that's all we're going to need for that. Um, so now I'm just going to go and put this onto my character here. Um, ideally on a custom controller. I don't know if I made a custom controller. Let's take a look. No. We'll make a custom controller. So new blueprint class. Player controller. And we call it stealth controller. And we'll go in there. And on the begin play... We go create widget and we create the heads up display. Promote that to a variable as you always should for the heads up display so you can always access it. Heads up display. And then you're going to add that to the viewport. Now, all that's left is to uh, assign this controller to your game. So just go into edit, product settings, maps and modes. Go into your game mode settings here, and you can change the default player class, control, player controller class, sorry, to the stealth controller. So now we get push F to take down appear in the center of the screen. So what you want to do is make that hidden by default. So go to head up display, click on that, and change it to be hidden by default. And then on the player character, we are going to call that function on the can takedown on the event graph here. So after the takedown trace, we're going to uh, get, well, first of all, we have to get our controller and get the HUD of the controller. Um, so that is best done on the begin play, uh, which I don't think we actually have. No, we don't. So we'll make a quick uh, begin play. So on begin play, you want to get controller. Uh, get 
player controller. There you go. And cast to the type of controller that we're using, which is a stealth controller. And then get the heads up display. And promote that to a variable, because you probably be using it quite a lot. So promote it to a variable to save you some hassle. And plug that all into begin play. Now if you go back to tick, we can on the end here drag out that heads up display and call the show takedown text like so. But you only want to do this if the out actor is true or not. So actually this might be easier to put into the actual takedown trace here and put that there with the return value going into the show. So if the can takedown is true, it will show the text. If it's false, it'll be not show the text. Um, we also want it to show on this false here as well. So take this, put it down here. And you want to make sure the show is set to false because this is when it fails uh, the ability to take down. So one minor bug that may happen is that you may get error messages saying that heads up display here in the player character does not exist. Now the reason why that happens is because the controller is spawned and this is spawned at the same time roughly. And therefore they're both trying to set up the heads up display. So all you do is you're on the third person character is take a little delay node and put it in at the start of begin play. This gives it enough time for the controller to spawn, get itself ready and then the character can then sort itself out. And before we go and test it out, one more thing we'll make sure we've got is we've got this head up display show takedown text equal to false also on this false down here too. So we'll put that up here, like so. Compile, save, done. So now push play, let's go find our guard, sneak up against him, push F to take down, walk away, look away, it like disappears. So in the next episode, we're going to make it so that when we push the F key, he's going to do the takedown. So join us in the next episode uh, over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Daily, where you can watch all of my videos before anyone else. Thank you so much to all my supporters and my YouTube members for their continued support. It really is amazing. I can't thank you enough. If you're watching this and you yet have not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help out a lot. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.